For over two decades, our CHOP has been the standard treatment of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And uh, there have been many attempts to try to improve upon our CHOP, uh, escalating doses of chemotherapy, um, giving chemotherapy um, in a more intensified way or infusionally, um, and adding new drugs to, to our CHOP. And attempts with drugs like bortezomib, lenalidomide and abrutinib in phase three trials all failed to show benefit um, compared to our CHOP alone. It's important when we think about diffuse large B cell lymphoma to emphasize the heterogeneity of that disease and subsets of patients that were potentially included in some of those older trials are no longer routinely included in, in large cell lymphoma trials. For example, double hit, uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma um, or high-grade lymphoma with translocations of BCL2 and MYC. Uh, the, that disease, uh, many people are giving more intensive treatment to compared to standard RCHOP and may not be uh, routinely included in studies. That said, the, the uh, news that has come out over the last year were the presentation and subsequent publication of the Polarex trial results. This was a trial that uh, randomized patients between conventional RCHOP treatment and um, RCHP, and then taking out vincristine and putting in polituzumab. Polituzumab is a conjugated antibody that um, does have a risk of neuropathy However, in this trial, the first finding, and it was a placebo-controlled randomized trial, was that there was no difference in toxicity between RCHOP and RCHP polituzumab. I enrolled patients on this trial, and again, it was placebo-controlled. I can tell you I did not know which arm the patients were on. So, um, And in fact, if you looked at the population level and of the data, with the exception of some minimal increase in neutropenia in the polituzumab arm that did not result in infections, there was really no difference in toxicity. From an efficacy standpoint, when you looked at the entire population, at the two-year time point, there was about a 6% difference uh, favoring the polituzumab-containing arm in progression-free survival. And this was statistically significant. Um, the RCHOP arm performed about exactly as you would expect an RCHOP arm to perform, so there didn't appear to be anything unusual about this patient population. And when you looked among subgroups of patients, uh, the groups of patients with higher risk disease appeared to potentially benefit the most, um, and there seemed to be more benefit in the ABC subtype as determined by gene expression profiling than the germinal center subtype. However, we should emphasize that these subgroups uh, were, uh, although they were predefined subgroups, um, there isn't the statistical power to make a lot of comparisons between the subgroups. They should be viewed more as hypothesis generating. So at the end of of the trial, what we have is a study that did show a statistically significant difference in progression-free survival with over two years of follow-up and um, no toxicity difference. So the question is, should we be using this new regimen now uh, rather than RCHOP? And I think for most patients, uh, certainly patients who would be eligible for this trial, which did require patients to have some risk factors, so IPI2 and above, um, I would likely plan on making the switch to RCHP polituzumab for that group of patients with advanced stage diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The reason that I'm doing this is that I believe uh, it looks like we are curing more patients with this regimen. And saving patients the um, morbidity and potential mortality of relapse um, is a worthwhile endeavor, despite the financial cost. And I'll close by saying there have been a couple of cost effectiveness analyses published um, and um, pending publication that I'm aware of. 
I did present in my talk one cost-effective analysis that did demonstrate that at current cost, this could be viewed as cost-effective, although it's 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 a borderline call. Um, this uh, regimen has been approved in Europe, and we anticipate um, FDA approval of this regimen over the next several months. And once that happens, I expect that this will become the standard of care for many of these patients across the United States.